KST with Gary V. Sipping in for three. I know patience is the key. Putting out all of my shit for free. This is T with Gary V. Might go make a flip. Take a risk. What's good, T fam? It's me, Gary. Good morning. It is uh, May 13th. We are fully in it at this point in the COVID crisis. I, this is the, everyone's talking about the new norm. You mean norm? Um, hope everybody's super well. Let me give some shout outs before we get into it. Dustin, how are you? Excellent. Excellent. Showered for, for the first shower in two days, so I feel I feel good. <laughs> That's your normal routine based on what I remember. Yeah. It didn't mean I hate doing that, but now it is. Now it's normal. We got it. <laughs> awesome. Corey Lord, what's good? Shane O, what's good? Kim, good to see you. Uh, strategy goddess thank you so much for being here real estate vj great thank you for being here hakeem draper what's good on the west coast at 6 a.m life big shout out to the twitch fam uh rosa for health uh james o good to see you darren f thank you casey Kerry gardner let's get into the show what's good class what's good brother how, how are you, you doing i'm well i'm yeah. uh, showered up bro i'm feeling good it's early for me man you West Coast in it? Mm. East Coast, Southeast. Oh, so this is the nine a.m. is early. Yeah, it's still early. Yeah. You're you're a go to bed at two, three, four a.m. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Good man. How's the music going? Good, good, good. I just um, I just signed with Republic about a month ago. Um, I got some records coming out with Diplo and uh, Post Malone, and some big shit coming. So. Congratulations. Be, uh, thank you, bro. Thank you. How do you feel right now when you know you're sitting on those tracks and you're you're no dope? Like you know that that's gonna give you a bunch of looks. Like do you think like damn this this quote unquote might be it? And and are you also mentally prepared because people have done things with huge artists and sometimes it's not the moment and it sometimes it happens four years later. Are you in the mindset of like I'm ready for if it pops off or I'm ready for it to be a disappointment and then it will happen in a couple of years? Like are you in that mindset? No, you know, I think I'm ready for it to pop off. I, um, you know, I know that even if it doesn't like ex completely explode over time, it's going to get me enough looks, you know, I mean, that is, that's worth it. I was, um, I was actually watching a video of yours uh, on Instagram the other day that was like one is greater than zero. And it was, um, it was really motivating as far as, you know, just taking the little views, you know what I mean? You know, Not just you know, all you know what's funny about that video is I love that video too for me personally because that's the one that shows even right now I have unlimited videos on YouTube that have 137, 219, 402 video. And I tell people all the time, like, do shit. Like, people, like, value their time a lot of times when when it's not valuable. And so, like, putting in the work. Yeah, for sure. But, I mean, you know, you got a song with them, Post Malone. It's really not going to be that much of a disappointment if it doesn't blow up it's still gonna it's still gonna blow up in a sense you know Correct. what i mean you're gonna get and other artists are gonna take a look and other producers are gonna take a look and other people are gonna take a look right he's just yeah. so huge that it's like you know it's a big it's a big opportunity i'm really ready to get my album underway and really you know kind of push uh my stuff in a big way but we got some features that you know during this quarantine downtime and stuff like that i think it really kind of keeps me fueled that, you know I mean? There's some big, big views coming, you know what I mean? Here and there. I can't, I can't wait to see it happen. What can I, what can I answer for you? Well, you know, I get asked a lot as an um, upcoming artist, and I'm not where I want to be yet, but I still get a lot of aspiring artists that come to me asking for advice on, you know, how to, how to make it in music, you know, in general. Um, or you know, they'll, they'll say, "How do you? How did you get this Post Malone feature? How did you? How did you meet Juice World? Blah blah blah." But you know, I think a lot of it is. Um, I, I would like to know, I guess, a good response uh, from you, your side of it. You know, maybe using some music-based examples, um, yeah. and just uh, how you would go about responding to an upcoming artist that's aspiring to be, you know, killing it in the enter entertainment yep. industry. For me two things stand out, taking it and having it come to you. So taking it is literally commenting, DMing on the biggest producers and artists and you know, world stars and AKA dist complex distribution places, but not doing what I see all the thirsty artists do, which is like leaving a comment on, you know, on 
Gunna's latest post or the baby's latest post or Meg Thee Stallion's latest post and saying like, yo, you gotta check out my beats. I'm the fucking freshest in the game. Or like, yo, they sleeping on me. I'm the best, pro-. like, that's just not gonna work. Right. It's, it's just too thirsty. And so, but what I do think is when when there's a there's a new, you know, key Glock or young boy post and you go in there and you actually analyze the song or you come out and you, you know, like I really, really feel Roddy Rich's lyrics. So like if you're an artist or producer that feels it and you come in and you quote one line and you tell people what you feel there or like, you know, I listened to Mozzie's new album like four times in a row and there was just a lot of things that hit me. If I was an up and coming artist or producer, I would go into those posts because he's promoting the shit out of his joint and leave thoughtful, thoughtful comments, not thirsty comments. So that's, that's going out and taking, or I DM Mozzie or the producers on that or his manager and say, yo, that fucking third track when he said this, or like, you know, you just give love but thoughtful enough, not spamming, but actually just genuinely putting in the work. So that's going and taking it. And that may catch someone's attention because you know this is an artist clever. Like you may have a deep lyric that really means something to you. It's kind of subtle in a song. Nobody gives a fuck. But if somebody comes around and is like, yo, those nine words together hit me, you're gonna take note of that. It's the same way I take note when people leave a comment in my Instagram about a certain part of a video that I could see is not the spiky part. It's not the part that everybody caught on, but I knew what it meant to me. That catches my attention. I'm like, oh, that's a thoughtful kid. Let me see what that's going on. Artists do that too. That's taking it. And then having it come to you is putting out the fucking work. Exactly. Yeah. I More agree music. With that. I believe I believe in it. Like everybody, you know, you know this. You've been watching me for a while. Like, like I I believe that putting out more music is good. Like I genuinely do. Yeah, you know, I I tell a lot of people like the content, everything that you know, keeping it consistent is great. A lot of people fail to do the research that I think that it takes, you know, just digging in and trying to, you know, find those opportunities, not just, you know, uh, doing all the social media things, but, you know, uh, a lot of people think you can just make the record and shoot the video and put it out there and pray to God, you know what I mean? And and that's that's, not- <laughs> that's almost 100% guaranteed to not work, almost 100%. Exactly. And I, it's hard to explain that to some people like they think it's just going to catch fire. And what they have to realize is a lot of the viral videos that you, you know, it's got a lot of work going into it. I know some record labels that put millions, millions of dollars into some marketing schemes for certain artists to get certain songs at, you know, at the number one spot. Yeah, yeah. Like if you so- look at the top 50 right now and you map it to TikTok, this is why I've been fucking yelling at the top of my lungs for 18 months to every artist and every person about TikTok, yet, if you get, you know, I mean, there was a moment when the baby was in my office, I'm like, bro, TikTok, <laughs> like, like you're already ascending, but you win in that environment, and and sure enough, you know, a couple of quotes, same thing with Lil Keed, you know, like some of, the, some of my guys have been really going in there, like TikTok, you know, uh, t- five TikTok influencers doing a dance to a certain snippet of a song will outperform four million dollar media spend by a fucking record company every day of the week in 2020. You know, and that's it's, it. Kind of goes back to your um, one is greater than zero thing. Even the even the the small influencers. I notice uh, when I check my stats on Spotify, um, you, you get a lot of um, a lot of plays that are. You know, a thousand of them only have a hundred plays or or fifty plays. You know, but if you're on a hundred thousand playlist and those a hundred thousand playlists all had a hundred plays on them, that's a lot of fucking plays, man. The so, long tail, Club. The long yeah. tail. I believe in that shit. It's and and by the way, that's exactly right. And inevitably, you've got one important person that's digging deeper and is on those small playlists, and that becomes the moment. Exactly. That one person, um, you know, it, it's a lot about who's listening and not how many sometimes because, you know, it, it, there was a couple of people trying to stop me from doing a particular song. And that particular song that came out, you know, was something that I was felt strongly about. And although people didn't necessarily feel great about the song, you know, enough to push it and put a bunch of money behind it. It just happened to be a song that got noticed 
by Justin Bieber, by Post Malone, that ended up being a feature that came out the next year. You know what I mean? That just kind of keeps that consistency going, you know? It's the single thing I believe in the most, which is when you make the content you want to make versus the content that people want you to make or that it looks like you should be making. It's the, it's the, it's literally the post I posted at 830 this morning on Instagram. It's me and uh, Murder Beats, you know? And, uh, and it's me a year ago telling him like, yo, TikTok. And, he, and, and he's like, yeah, but I don't dance. I'm like, no, no, no. This, you do what you do. And here we are a year later and TikTok looks completely different than it did a year ago. When I was yelling 18 months ago, a year ago, everyone's like, 14 year old girls? And I was like, for now. Right. Yeah, it's definitely huge. My TikTok is is slacking right at the moment. But... But I'm telling you right now, there is. I believe that TikTok is more important to you than Spotify. How about that? On wow. some real shit. Well, and you might be right. I I tend to to go uh, really hard on some of the platforms that pay because I do so much to the free stuff that. But bro, but bro, you you're too smart for that because you're super thoughtful. I'm I'm loving this combo. The number one thing that pays is the place where everybody's eyeballs are at, even though it's not paying you because those eyeballs pay later. Right, facts, that's that's huge facts. You know, I've got a TikTok, mine's at Clever. I made it look look the part, you know, I've got the blue check going on. Uh, I got about 3,000 followers, which is, you know. Clever, listen to me, <laughs> let's, let's make this action oriented because I'm gonna jump the next call and we'll chop up in real life, I can't wait. You need to post two or three times a day on TikTok, it will change your game, I'm telling you. Okay. Hey, you figure said it, it out. Go, go all in. I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm with it. I'm right, with man. it. I wish you well, man. Can't wait uh, to see you, you too, bro. Thank again. you so Bye. much. Got you. A lot of fun. He's a super smart kid. I like his thoughtfulness. Good job, Dustin. I know you were playing with the mics there. I thought you did a really good job. That was challenging. Yeah, that was tough. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Let's keep it going. Right, let's keep this going. Oh, Gary. Hey, Rashad. Rashad? Or Rashad. Rashad, yeah. real pleasure. Oh, it's awesome. I'm excited to be here, man. Um, real quick, I just want to say thank you a couple of couple of times here. Thank you to you, first of all, for the amount of content that you're just giving away for free. You know, so many people want to charge for the words coming out of their mouth, so I appreciate that. Happy to do it. And, uh, you know, that you're very simple and you cut through the noise, you know, so right to the point. I appreciate it. The simplicity, it comes so natural to me. And, and I think that we cloud our heads with so many things are just our fake perception and it stops us. And so I, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, I de definitely want to thank your team, you know, Dustin and Zane for coordinating things behind the scenes. I mean, I don't think people necessarily understand everything that's going into producing this, but, uh, you know, props to those guys for being on top of things and coordinating. So I agree. I think, I think Dustin's getting too much credit and Zane's not getting enough. <laughs> Dustin. I, I agree. <laughs> you agree, right? Yeah. All right. Get out of here. All right. Um, so I uh, I had a couple of questions that I think caught the team's attention there a little okay. little while back. I know they've been trying to get me on the show for a few days. So um, my first question is uh, just from the point of view, I'd like to get your perspective on um, what you see as leadership and their responsibility during times of crisis, and I guess how we, how we recover from crisis too. Uh, what your perspective is? What's what's the biggest responsibility they have? To be compassionate and sympathetic and empathetic to everybody but themselves. That's, that's what I think the responsibility is. I think, I think true leadership is when, you're lead, when you realize you're working for all of them, not the reverse. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very clear to me when I see good leadership and when I see bad leadership. And so for me, great, the responsibility of an actual leader is to, as the going gets tough, to be even more about their army than themselves and so does that leader have the humility, the patience, the empathy, the compassion, the sympathy, the kindness to give fucks about everybody but themselves? That takes you know, self-deprecation, that takes you know, selflessness, yeah. it takes a lot of things and so I think um, that's what I'm looking for and that's what, and I think a lot of, you know, to me, only the ultimate leader can go all the way there, me in my companies for example, um, because, for example, a lot of the leaders on my companies, I've noticed, are worried about their paycheck, are worried about their happiness, and that's because they're not at that ultimate leader spot just yet. 
and the and and then in other people you see it there even though they aren't the ultimate leader and then you're like oh they have the attributes to be an ultimate leader so it's about so it's about those things so i think the responsibility is to put it on their shoulders it's on them yeah for sure i agree i think it's great love the perspective um so moving on from that uh unrelated question um you know leadership is a passion of mine i've been loving leadership you know i mean leadership is such a broad kind of term i guess but you know i mean leadership in its form and its art and its you know growing yourself growing other people i love all this stuff and um <clears throat> i've recently kind of made the jump to actually doing something and you know it's been in my heart for a long time to pursue that and to try and you know grow something out of that and uh i mean really you know, I'm an infant at this point, you know, having just kind of kicked off my social platforms and stuff like that. And I'm trying to be, you know, on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter. And I'm about to launch a website and a podcast, <clears throat> you know, but like we're four weeks into this and I, I don't want to get overwhelmed and I don't want to dilute what I'm trying to do. And so I just want to know what you believe would be the best actions for me to focus in well, I on. Think, I think eliminating the word dilution. You know, volume does not mean dilution. Right. So just keep pumping it out. <laughs> I don't I don't feel diluted. Saying shit you don't believe is dilution. Yeah. I get you. But you can say the same thing across 13 different platforms, the same exact thing, 13 different ways, because LinkedIn is different than TikTok, and that means it's not diluted. The dilution comes in saying shit you don't believe in or you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. The dilution does not come in the volume of creative that is put out. Right. I get it. Makes sense? <laughs> Makes sense. People people focus on dilution or quality in amount of pieces out. I There's some people that are diluted the first fucking words out of their mouth because they're talking some bullshit. Yeah. It doesn't matter that they only posted one time. Yeah. I think I end up thinking too hard about about what I'm trying to say, and you know, I'm making trying to try to make really in depth, in deep, uh, long form content and stuff like that. It's just yeah, you're you know, I sit there staring at my computer screen for like, uh, man, you know, does it sound good? Does it not sound good? It's even even in the way you're you're doing this Q and A with me, it makes sense to me, right? Like, I think you put thoughtfulness on a pedestal, which is amazing. I think, but I think, but I think that if you're thoughtful, it will come out. You know. I think a lot of people think too much about presentation. Like I come out, like, you know, there's a very good chance that I'll go down as the kindest entrepreneur of a generation, yet I don't think that's how people saw me at first with my fucking <laughs> cursing and aggressiveness and competitiveness and jerseyness, yeah. right? And so what I mean by that is the truth will always shine. Yeah. It's just the way it is. There's no sure. hiding in life. And so no matter how clever people try to do or how much they package it, um, you know, it's, it's just so obvious to me that, you know, it will ultimately play out. No matter how misunderstood I was for a decade, a lot of it's starting to play out. And I didn't think, it, you know, heck, I think this show has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, I couldn't have predicted COVID or, you know, I kind of predicted tea with Gary V's. I don't know if you saw that clip from ten years ago on Instagram, but you know, I definitely, um, I definitely feel as though you're overthinking it because if you've got it, it will play out, and if you don't, it will play out. And I think you trying to package it, you know, is not mm -hmm. going to be the variable. Right. So just Good? yeah, be thoughtful and you know. Share be thoughtful and... by nature, not by sitting there and be tactically thoughtful. Right. Don't become a fucking poet. You know, like fucking just put it out. However it comes out. It will get, the more you put it out, I'm I'm better at putting it out than I was a decade ago because right. I've kept putting it out, putting it out, and then it gets refined. Yeah. It doesn't get refined in your head. It gets refined by living it. Right. I get it. Good. Thank you. I want to see you in Edmonton. I got, the, I, I, I got my ticket. I'm I hope desperately that. Desperately trying to get there. <laughs> One time canceled. The second time in the fall, I'm worried about. We'll see what happens. But I will yeah. get my ass to Edmonton. I'm committed. All right. I'll see you soon. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Love this. Swing for the ring. Good to see you, Stephen Pata. Great to see you. Wanted to get your thoughts on something. Please. Um, on YouTube, there's someone that's kind of spamming. I mean, I, 
and everyone's telling me to ban him, but I'm not gonna because it's obviously not my call. Yeah, I think. Look, I think you know. I saw it on Twitch a little bit. I'm seeing it on YouTube a little bit. Like, I think we're gonna need to consider mods. So okay. why don't why don't we why don't we you know everybody's kind of looking right now. Dustin, not Justin, is your Instagram handle, right? Yeah. Maybe, and, and let's not over flood Dustin. If you genuinely want to be a mod, meaning you want to be here every day and you want to. You know, you feel like you understand me, which is don't ban too early. I like when people razz me. It's just when somebody just spams. Oh, I mean, that's what it is. It's not someone razzing you. It's just yeah. I, I know that's what you're yeah. saying, but we may need to need some some mods. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Okay. Um, is, are they still doing it? Um, no, I I try. I asked them nicely if you could just cut, like, try to stop a little bit. I and love that. That's he said. He said pretty much told me to fuck off. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Let's put them on the show. Let me have a combo. Right, okay. Keep it going. Hello, my friend. Hello? Hello? Are you hearing me? I can hear you. What's your name? Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Marasakar. I am I'm Syrian, living in Iraq, in Arabia City. I'm 18 years old. Um, I have a two questions for you, so hope you can distribute what I'm on. The first one is, I like your you know, speech and how you communicate with people and be effective in your speech. In your speech, uh, and you mentioned about how the voice technology will make the impact in the future. So yes. Thank you for the value that you were put there. And now it's talking in front of all the big audience. Don't make you high anxiety or make you forget what about to say and how you arrange the topics that you want to talk about and how you uh what's the steps do you take before the event because when i see you on the event i saw you working in your phone like nothing's gonna happen what's what's make you uncomfortable from the inside and let you focus on what, what you're about to say i you know what's uh so i think the question is when i'm when i'm communicating you know how am i able to gather my thoughts so I know what I'm talking about on stage. How do I make that transition? How do, what's my process to know what I want to be communicating about in that scenario, whether it's on stage or somewhere else? Is that right, Moes? Yeah, just uh, how, how, how you focus on what, what you want to say, how, how, what's make you comfortable from the inside and yeah. let you focus. Understood, so in that exact, to that point, and you went even more thoughtful, I appreciate that. What is it in me that allows me to be so comfortable, confident, and, and then quiet and focused that it lets me articulate at the level that I do? Exactly. I, I think the, I think it's, I, this, is where, this is a very fun moment for me. I think it comes down to experience. Experience. I think a lot of people want to speak early on and things of that nature, the, the number one reason I'm able to, there's many things. I have natural improv, Im, comedic improv capabilities. I'm very comfortable in all scenarios. I have an amazing relationship with adversity and, and tough situations. So going on stage is as tough as it gets for a lot of people, but I'm okay if it doesn't go well. I also think experience, so it's experience and adversity. My relationship with adversity, I'm okay with anything happening. The mic doesn't work, people boo me, they think it's stupid, it's all fine for me, that relationship with adversity. Number two, I only talk about what I know. Too many people talk about things they don't know. Too many people want to talk about things that they haven't lived yet, that they haven't experienced, that they're not experts in. They talk about it because it's the cool thing or the hot thing or the important thing. They talk about shit they don't know. It's not their truth. So I speak my truth and I have a relationship with adversity, which means on a moment's notice, if you were like, if, if you were like hey Gary, my screen's now gonna turn to 500,000 people in Iraq and I need you to give a keynote, I would do it right now, right now. I would say, T, I'm sorry, I have to give this half a million person keynote. My friends and family in Iraq, you know, like I would go right into it. So I think it's about staying in my lane, only talking about what I know, and being unbelievably comfortable with adversity. That's what makes you believe in your talk? A hundred percent. I believe in myself because I don't care what people think about me. It's my relationship with judgment. I don't care. 
And what I mean by that, of course I care, I'm a human being, but I can't value it more than my own happiness. I can't live on somebody else's terms. I can't. It's a bad idea. How, how, how to make the balance between your opinions and the data that you have? And what's recommended for? Data shows you yesterday. My intuition helps me with tomorrow. I respect data, but only yes. after the fact. There is no data of the future, and I only play in the future. I only play what's in front of me. We're tomorrow, right now and tomorrow. Yesterday's yesterday. There is no dwelling. There is no, you know, woe is me. There is no, oh, that's how it was. I take the past and I context it. it ha- the past is what told me TikTok was gonna be important because I watched, I have experience on how Vine, how Twitter, how Instagram, how Snapchat happened. So I saw the patterns. I saw the patterns, so I respect the past, but I don't overdwell on it. And I yeah. don't, And when somebody says to me, well, Gary, 86% of people buy their products at stores, not on e-commerce in America. I'm like, yes, that was yesterday. Now we have COVID. Things are gonna change. Da, 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 da. So it's that balance. Hey. I appreciate it, my friend. Hey. I wish you well. Thank you for being on the show. Okay, okay just... Uh, the- Two question I have just the, the next the second is I worked about three years in an ad cars company called goodsell.com that's owned by my uncle and my dad. My work is in this company is cars photographer. Uh, I just want you to see my work in this my Instagram profile. Please. I uh, didn't document the entire process in my working but I have some example in my profile, so hope you can see it. A hundred percent. Can you see it now? Of course. I will take a look at it. I'll have Dustin okay. set me up. I'm... All right. Okay. Just uh, I, I what I work in this company uh, too is uh, I write uh, car specifications and I have a powerful knowledge about the car specifications and I work as a professor at our work with part of exhibitions and cars engineering. And I worked as a, a website admin. What's, what's, what, what I worked in my spare time is I learned multiple things like uh, video editing and programming, but I didn't achieve the level of professionalism at this thing because I, because I spent my time with, in it uh, as a hobby. That makes sense. Plus like, you were, uh, you were, you were, I, most, you, I, were I, you were a kid, you were a kid. You were 15 to 18. Yeah. You're a fucking kid. I watch a lot. Yeah. That's why. Thank you. I'll save you time on the answer. You're I, a kid. I, I, thank you. You're welcome. I watch a lot of your for this for this video. I I interested in this thing. I and what how the business work. My interest in marketing and branding and maybe in the future build the businesses. I'd love that, man. We'll get May, to know each other. Uh, if, if, you, if you, now, what's the uh, requirement? Maybe if I can uh, work in your company. I've been looking forward to working with you for a long time. I will so, be happy at anything listen, that advise me in the marketing. Field. Listen, I've good news for you. Yes, yeah, I got it. I appreciate you taking your shot. Good news for you. And any requirements you require. Yep, good news working for you. Working for free and yep. to take the effort and the time. Working here on your country, even if you want to, do, to let me training in the beginning and show you my capabilities, because my goal is my goal is to learn. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Listen to me. Right. Good news. Now that we're more open to remote work, we may have a shot. I'm gonna have Dustin connect us after this, and we'll, we'll get to talking in next week or two. Okay. Yes. All right. Good luck, brother. Let's get yes. it going. Thank you. Thanks for all of you who are watching, bearing with it, because obviously the audio was a little tough, but uh, I just liked him and wanted to get through that. So let's keep it going. Mo. Hey, Gary, what's up? Life is good, brother. How are you? I'm doing fine. I want to thank you a lot for this amazing program that you're doing. Like, I've learned so much. It's the best shit on the internet, really. Best thank info you. out there. Thank you so thank much. You, Where are you from, brother? Thank you. I'm originally from Lebanon, but uh, I'm currently in uh, Denmark. Like uh, I've been living in Europe for the past five years, and I think it helped me a lot in many aspects. I love it. And my 
Yeah, like uh, I'm just going to give you a small backstory and then, you know, you can help me a bit better, I think. So uh, I came from Lebanon and I studied in Poland. I studied medicine and I finished my medical degree this year. And uh, the thing with medicine is like, uh, you know, like it's a very demanding a profession, especially in residency. You need so much work. You need to work like really long hours and it's very difficult, you know, and uh, I want this thing where I want to really empower others, especially young people, because I've been there, I've been in this third world uh, country, and I know how difficult it is actually to go outside that community, you know, and how to find an opportunity outside. So I just want to help like people because I had a scholarship back there. So I want to help like more people have more opportunities to just do the things that they want. How would you do but, that? Like, I think by, you know, like, there is many ways to do it. Like, I agree. A big factor can be, like, uh, like financially, it can be very helpful, like helping them getting the education that they want, uh, supplying them with a jobs that they can uh, get uh, some valuable knowledge in. You know, like, many, many stuff, you know, like, I see people out there and they are, like, studying, studying for long years and there is no jobs in the market for what they are studying, you know. Yes, so because like because the modern because because the modern education system globally is has some substantial flaws in it compared to what the people think they're getting out of that education. The promise of the 1950s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, even 90s, of like if you go to university, or if you go to even you know to your point, even even some of the things that are still safe, legal, and medical, and things of that nature, like. It's it's a very different world out there with the internet, um, and you know the the promises that have been made for generations are vulnerable right now. Obviously, there's still plenty of careers where if you get that degree, that is the only way to get in. But people are amassing enormous amounts of debt. The amount of money that they're getting in return is not where it used to be, especially in the medical field and other places. And yes, I agree. There's major vulnerabilities with the system. Yeah, I agree too. So this leads me to my question, which is like, uh, how can I, Gary, like balance my career as a doctor and my passion to empower others, given like the very demanding a profession, you know, like, it, like yep. you need some time to help others. And how can you make up that time? Uh, by auditing all your leisure. Uh -huh. Can you please explain me more? I can, of course. Me? I want to know every hour of your life when you're not mm -hmm. doing your medical field and you're not sleeping, I'd like to understand every hour. Uh -huh. I understand you. But like so, uh, the problem is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I understand you. It's like like working, like I haven't started working yet, but I'm gonna start working in the month. Okay. And uh, I've done some internships, so I've seen exactly what's the work like. Like I've okay. done an internship for like a month and a half and I've lived it. I understand. And it's like very demanding job. You start working at 7.30 in the morning and you finish work by five or six. You're completely exhausted. You need to go and eat something and you're really tired and you end up sleeping and waking up at six in the morning. On the weekends, you will have shifts. Maybe every two weekends, you will have like a weekend off, but that's mostly it. Yeah, so a couple things. I've always wanted to help people too. And in the beginning of my career, I didn't do it because the internet wasn't at scale and I was working retail, you know, six or seven days a week, you know, and I was working much longer hours than you're referring to. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would yeah. get to the store at 7.30, uh, eight, it would open at nine. I would work until it was closed at 9 p.m. and then I would go home. And so I very much understand, and I, and I would work that, I would work nine to 10 p.m. on Friday and Saturday, every single day for mm -hmm. seven, eight years. So maybe you're, maybe the answer to your question is you can help people in seven years, not today. When I talk mm -hmm. about patience, I really talk about patience. If you're telling me that your job yeah. is gonna milk you so hard and, and mm -hmm. require you not to have the energy to help, well then you don't have the energy to help. Now it's oh, just, I now it's just that. ideology. I, ideology, excuse me. Now you're just saying, you know, you'd like to, which is fine. I just don't think you have to, you know, 
beat yourself up that you're not doing it yet. Maybe you can do it in five years. Mm -hmm. Like the thing is like, I've seen like many people and in some way they are able to, to, to do it. Like, I'm sure you have like so much work to do, so many things to do, but still you can find some because time I, to do it. Because, so, I don't, because I don't fear messing up. Uh-huh, okay, okay. The reason most people are able to do more is because they don't lack, they don't fear losing. They don't fear failure. People that fear yeah. failure don't do things. That's the true. reason I'm so That's fast true. is I don't put perfection on a pedestal. 80% uh -huh. of something done is better than 0% of something done. If you help one person yes. by doing a one hour Skype, when you said you still have two to three months, I laughed in my head. I literally laughed. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I said, okay, great. Yeah. So fucking help people for the next two to three months. You could be on the fucking internet 12 hours a day helping I'm, people. I started, I Good. started actually, and I did like an Instagram page and I'm Good. posting things that will help uh, like young people. Good. Uh, that. Yeah. But yeah, like I'm doing it or, or, already because of you and because of Tea with Gary Vee. Like it, and because of you. helped me just start. Good. You know? More. I think it's More. very important. More. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think I will just need to work more on it. More. More. You know, some days you're going to feel yeah. energized after work and from 9 to 11 p.m. you're going to lay in bed and make content and answer somebody's question and, you know, DM somebody to be on their podcast because you know you have that weekend off in two weeks. This is a very simple yeah, game. Either true. you're doing it or that's you're not. True. Either you're doing mm -hmm. it in real life or you're doing it in your head. And in real life, it works better. That's true, yeah. Awesome. Take care, Mo. And that's why I like your content because it's practicality. Thank you very much, bro. You're welcome, brother. Thank you. It is practicality. Like, they're, they're, it's actions over everything. The reason I get into mindset and, and some bigger issues is because they're the seeds that don't lead to action. So, let's keep it going. Dude. Uh, how are you? Yo, Gary, good, man. Thanks. How are you? Good, man. What's your name? My name's Chris Cacciotti from uh, Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. It's a pleasure, Chris. Between the five hat and the work hard, like, I'm feeling you already. Right? Yo, Gary, this, uh, this hat is the local Sudbury professional basketball team, the I've Sudbury Five. I've got it. So I I've obviously, had, <laughs> obviously I had to wear it. I'll send you one. I appreciate it. And uh, there's a story that you told about, and I'm – fascinated by it where you went to the Knicks game with the ugly sweater and sat courtside and that kind of had a whole bunch of attention on you and on the jumbotron and I kind sports of applied center. that yeah sports center when I uh, when I go to basketball games I sat courtside for the inaugural season last year uh, season tickets on the court and I wore this like fuzzy flannelly kind of colorful jacket red, red pants that the whole stadium can see and I became like a super fan almost. So <laughs> that was built on the back of that story that you told with the Knicks uh, ugly sweater. I appreciate it, Chris. What can so I, I want? Uh, yeah. So first off, I want to start off. I know you don't hear, I know you don't hear compliments, but I know that you're, that you're very uh, interested in legacy. So I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of the, all of the guidance that you've been giving me from afar for the last five years. I mean, uh, it's, you drive home so many important concepts and you've really changed the way I think about of a lot of things. And it's really had a massive impact on my life. And you're actually changing the course of humanity, I believe with, by making things like patience and gratitude, uh, patience, gratitude, hard work, empathy, kindness, you're making these cool and you're impacting not only my generation, but younger generations, the older generations, you're impacting the entire planet. And you are going to reach your goal of everyone on earth knowing who you are. And when they do, you're going to make the world a much better place. So I just wanted that. to start off with that. Thank you, brother. Um, what you can help me with is um, I work for the YMCA of Northeastern Ontario, so in the not-for-profit sector. And I got there by, um, after nine years in the private construction industry, worked my way up from site superintendent up to a junior partnership offer, but it just wasn't lighting my soul on fire. It wasn't making me happy. I wasn't really passionate about it. 
Yep. So, um, but I was making good money and I had an opportunity to make a lot of money for my family and provide for my family. So I kind of grinded it out. I respect that too. In 2017, our son was diagnosed in utero with some, uh, with a fairly, like a really insane and critical heart disease. I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. Uh, and he had open heart surgery at birth and during the recovery process and kind of taking all this into consideration, I just came to the realization that life is just far too short to be spending it doing something that you don't love. So I left with, I left, I joined, uh, I jumped in with the Y uh, and now I feel like I've really found my lane because I get to use my talent, skills and passions and everything that makes me me is an asset and a strength and I get to deploy that to make the community that I live in a better place. I love you for that. Thank you. So the long winded way to get into this question <laughs> is how do I, how do I apply the 5149 rule or giving more than I take into fundraising whereby the main function of my role is to get, is to depend on other people's generosity when those people are not the, the, the benefactors of that generosity by asking them what you can bring to the table. Hey, old rich dude in the neighborhood who can actually afford to pay a a check that will help the YMCA even though none of his family or people he knows are there, what can I, Chris, in any shape or form, bring you in value? I'm not kidding. Right, yeah. That's actually the answer. I think fundraising's a real, I think it's one of the most interesting moves in fundraising. Instead of doing what most people do, which is try to guilt or play no. towards one's bleeding heart. Yeah. I think the question is, what can I do for you? Right. Okay. You'd be, and that's you'd, be, what... you'd be shocked. I mean, I've seen I've seen things because I I'm quiet with what my fundraising, but I'm on a lot of boards. I do a lot of stuff, and right. and it's wild what some of the answers are. Like sometimes the answer looks like my daughter's struggling with swimming, and you or your best friend happens to be a great fucking swimmer, and it's literally I'm not kidding. It's literally check to YMCA. Your best friend is teaching his or her daughter to swim. Right. Okay. So, right. Okay. So you basically, it basically boils down to understanding the people you are approaching to be donors. By and asking then, them what you can bring to them in value. You don't even need to understand. I don't even understand shit. I could, wa- <laughs> I could walk up to Sir Winston Thompson and be like, hello, Sir Winston Thompson. What? is the most interesting things to happen in your world. The most interesting, the reason I'm sitting here, luckily our friend Karen put us together, is I want you to write a check to the YMCA because I'm passionate. Here's my story, my son's heart condition. Da, da, da. That already puts you in a good spot. I'm here not looking for you to write a check out of the goodness of your heart because I want to make this practical. What on earth can I help you with? I'm a social butterfly, I'm connected to a lot of people, I have a lot of my own skills. I will bleed for you in return for what you want because I want you, not even for me, I want you to give that money to the YMCA. That is a fucking killer pitch. That is, yeah, that is a killer pitch. Right, okay. So The end. The end. Just Chris, the end. Approach Everything. people, ask them what they want, or approach people, ask them what they want, and, and obviously, give them content. And obviously the way that you approach it, that will, your success rate will be on your cadence, will be on your, on your skill set in asking. Some people are going to be dopey about it. Some people are gonna walk up to somebody and be like, yo, what do you want? And it's like, oh, they're like scared. And like, you know, like you have to find your cadence, your tact, your ability. But it is the punchline of the question. Period. Right. It will yeah. it will outperform every other way you go about it. I, I, it would work on me. I don't want to see your fucking picture of the fucking playground you're gonna build with my money. I don't care about the cute picture of the kids. Of course I do. That is a given. I understand that to be true. It's not that I don't care and I'm heartless. It's that I know what the fuck you're up to. The YMCA is super branded. I get it. Right. What I, what I, what I want, what, like if you come at me with what do you want from me, I'm like, wow, you know, that's powerful. Right, because no one's really, it doesn't seem like in the fundraising world that a lot of people are taking that approach. They're not at all. Everyone, I tell my nonprofit friends all the time, you're audacious. Just because somebody has money, why the fuck should they give it to you? My brother has Crohn's disease. I want to give that money to that. I have fucking, I, I, highest the foundation to help my family get out of Russia. I want to give to that. Like, why am I, you know, why, you know, people want to give to things that they care about, not what you care about. 
Right. So then a way to kind of sweeten the deal is on top of the altruistic nature of it, what's in it for me, basically. 100%. What can I do for you? Yep. And if you end up fucking, you know, shoveling snow, <laughs> you know. <laughs> there you go. I would shovel snow. I would do that. Me I too. Do... Me That's too. Kind of... Life's about value exchange. And too many people look at the people that are in a position to give and they just think that they should give. It lacks complete empathy. It lacks any kind of kindness. It's right. completely audacious. It's, a, it's an unbelievable as if. It's, 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 just, it's just not fair. You don't know anything about them. You don't know how they made their money. You don't know what they're doing currently. You don't know their actual situation. People just fucking think that they should as if like, hey, why aren't you doing this, Sir Winston? Sending, writing a $10,000 check is easy for you. You don't know. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. You don't know and shit. <laughs> so ask for what you can bring to the table. Period, end of story. Guilt, guilt and expectations no, yeah. don't work. No, no, I'm not, I'm not into that. I'm not into guilt. I'm not into playing the victim in any way, in any way, shape or form. I mean, that's one of the major kind of mindsets that I have. And again, based on lot, the two major themes that you, that you preach accountability and um, accountability and gratitude is that accountability plus gratitude is a choice, uh, a choice to say when you're presented with a difficult decision, you have a choice to either crumble, use it as an excuse and kind of break down or, or to push through, develop as a human and actually come out on the other side. Chris, ask people what you could do for them. The yeah. Answer. Okay, sweet. One more thing. One more thing. Um, so I've just, uh, in January, in January, I launched a children's book. Um, I wrote a children's book. 10% of it's going to sick kids. I actually sent one to your office uh, a couple months ago. I don't know. I don't know if it made its way to, I don't know if it made its way to Misha and Xander, but uh, I appreciate it, brother. I'll I'll act, I'll ask Lou and Alex. I'm sure they're watching, or Dustin will let them know. I'll look for it. What's the name of it? It's called My Very Excellent Mother Just Served Us Nine Pizzas. <laughs> That's it. not that. Yeah, it's a it's a it's, it's a, a su- it's a pseudonym for how we learned how to memorize the names, the order of the planets, uh, growing up when we were in school. I love that. But checking in on that wasn't the reason for this question. It's actually a tactical question on um, I just basically the way I've been marketing these books is like guerrilla marketing on my personal page. I've sold like 700 units, pushing 800 units. I'm getting consignment deals. I'm getting uh, like corporate buyers are buying big bulk numbers. Do you have a Facebook group? All- I don't have a Facebook group. No, I started a Facebook page, but I've been slacking on getting it going. Same thing with Instagram. Facebook and Instagram are your two platforms for this book. Yeah. Period. Okay. And Facebook what kind group. of and what kind of content pillars do you think uh, independent publishing co could kind one about, of one about you, one about the book, one about you know uh, the first fans of the book, you know, just the content. Right. Um, and I got to say, Gary, that a lot of the support that I've been, a lot of the support that I've gotten off the initial phases of this book have been completely predicated on things that I've learned from you and about like personal branding and giving more and no expectations and everything, everything that's been happening with this book has basically been built on kind of the model that you've been preaching since that, I've started listening to you. So That you executed. I have super admiration, brother. Lots of people listen to me. Most don't execute. Keep doing right it. Right on, dude. I love you, pal. Talk to you soon. I love you too, bro. Take care. Nice kid. I like that dude's energy a lot. All right, let's keep it moving. Oh, shit. What's Gary up, B. Kevin? First off, UGK for life. All right, <laughs> Quincy. Um, also, MC, bro, man. I hope I get to play you someday. Um, anyway, dude, I just want to put out there. Thank you for everything. I didn't even hear about your ass until about two months ago. Um, this conversation has the potential to change the trajectory of music education globally, I feel. So I want to just, uh, briefly talk about me because it's not about me. Um, raised in Missouri, I'm 41 world champion drummer, world champion drum instructor. I breed world champion drummers. My, one of my students just recently played the Emmys. Later in life in my 30s, here comes dubstep. I'm a dubstep <laughs> producer for like 10 years. Some people would say one of the pioneers in American dubstep. Played with bass nectar, pretty lights. Played in 48 states, festivals, coast to coast. I had a record label called That's Dope Records. And it's uh, 
blew up in my face in 2018 because I ended up over promising. Um, mm-hmm. Spread myself thin. Yep. yep. I ended up um, getting on at a corporate music school that has a movie and Broadway musical named after it. <laughs> and, you know, uh, Jack Black's the star. And they brought me on as a drum instructor, then the music director, then the general manager. And I was at a franchise. So um, I really wanted to start this EDM and DJ program, like hip hop EDM production DJ program for the kids. So I lined it up, been working on it. I launched it at my franchise in Denver. Um, and then there's a company school. I'm originally from Missouri. So there's a, a, a there was a position open in Kansas City. And I started flying back and forth every week this year before COVID. And uh, really thought that corporate was going to finally bite on it, right? But they're really stuck on ACDC, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, that type of thing. They're not, uh, they're not really, you know, I, I keep getting pushback. All right. So here we are. It's eight weeks into COVID. Pu- I've been pushback, teaching- pushback in the form of like, this is not real music and we love, and we love grunge better, like in on, the some, form- on, on some subjective shit. In the form of like, yeah, bro. Yeah, I get it. You know, I mean, you know. By so, the way, by the way, that's most of what happens in the world. I just want to make sure I'm grounded in what the pushback is. Yeah, I mean, the pushback is, you know, I finally thought they were going to let me do it this corporate school because I got their attention because we had a successful season. Like the program is lit. It fucking it succeeds, bro. Okay. Love it. Um, so where I'm at with it, bro, is, you know, I, uh, I had the conversation with the software companies and let them know what's up. They're down. And, uh. You know, I feel like I keep getting this. Well, well, let's talk about it in 18 months. We'll talk about it then. Well, that's Not fucking cor- that's corporate. Right. Exactly. Right. That's what, that's what you signed up for, bro. Well, <laughs> well, nothing. So, you, yeah. you you took it at bad in entrepreneurship. You misplayed it. Mm-hmm. You're, you're young as fuck still. You're resetting mm-hmm. in corporate. Mm-hmm. So you're eating a fucking fat piece of shit. Mm-hmm. And and now we're going to make some new decisions. Yes, right. So that's why we launched SpankyStudio.com. So I'm still <laughs> teaching all of these uh, all of these lessons online, right? Through through Zoom, and it's more like a mental health checkup. And what I'm realizing is like doing the music production on Ableton through Zoom is way more efficient and productive because I can annotate right there on the screen. We get work done through Zoom, and um, so I guess really where I'm at, Gary, is. I'm going to do this regardless. I'm here to double down on my strengths. I know what I do. It's going to happen regardless. Um, School of Rock, sorry, they didn't holler back. And I said, you know what? If they don't holler back by the time I get on here with Gary V, what's the worst he's going to say is no. So Gary V, my question to you is, do you have any interest in helping launch the School of Hip Hop and EDM? Um, Probably no, but not for a bad reason. Like mm-hmm. I really believe in it and I genuinely believe just on your energy that it's gonna work. My biggest thing right now is my liquid situation because I've got to save my own businesses in a global pandemic is not yep. where I want it to be. So I'm super yes. head down. Plus my stopgap, kind of my insurance policy always was, well, I always have my personal brand speaking career and that's gone from something right. significant to dead fucking zero. Right. And, and then it goes into savings land. So. The timing, I'm just not in that spot right now, right? right? No, yeah, I feel um, that. But, but I, you know, I think that if you want to email me at Gary at VaynerMedia what you think financially it needs to get off the ground, I'm happy to populate it a little bit because I have a ton of friends in music right. who might find it more passionate and, and, and more compelling. Because I can tell you right now, the, the energy is there. The question is, what did you learn from the over-promising, under-delivering, and your cash flow management on the record label. However, record labels are much more high risk, high reward than a school where you're getting revenue in at every time. So I'm, I'm happy to look at that. And I don't need a fucking business plan. I need fucking six sentences that tell me what the fuck you're up to. All right. Yo, bro, that, you are my Russian Jesus. Thank you. Bro. <laughs> I got you, Kev. I wish you All well. Right. Take care. All Let's right. get one more in here, Dustin. Hi, Melissa, you're on mute. Hey, Gary. Hi, Melissa. I didn't think I was going to get on. I'm so excited. I'm glad we made it happen. I'm very grateful to be here, and I echo your team's been really awesome. Amazing customer service. Thank you. So my question to you, and if you want context, I can give it to you, but when do you decide to give up a project or a side hustle? When you decide to. 
Like okay. when you genuinely, you know, there is no like, look, there have been people that have given up on a project and a side hustle literally one month before it was gonna pop. The amount of people that, you know, were meant to be quote unquote music famous but gave up at it at 27 when their next song was gonna be what was gonna make them hit and now they're an accountant, I believe in that. But I believe that percentage is much smaller, much smaller. Call that the 1% to the 99% that are delusional and tone deaf to the response of the market and are still grinding at something that the world has told them they're not good at. Yeah, so I have a protein bar called it Fitz Bar. It's down here and it launched, it launched awesome in 2017. It was good great. And then I had all of these manufacturing issues. So mm-hmm. I lost customers. I lost all my store. You know, things got super tough and crazy. Yeah. And then yeah. in 2018, I have a disease called endometriosis, um, kind of like Crohn's, like what you're, you were saying with yep. your brother. Yep. And I had to have this big surgery. And I remember like laying in bed, like in the hospital bed, like being on Instagram for the brand. And I was like, you know, this is like, I have to change this. So I stepped back and found a different manufacturer which has been great. And they're local. I'm in Detroit. Um, they're local here in love. Detroit. Yeah. Much that, love back. Yeah. And that, and that story is going to resonate, right? Like if there's like, let there be no confusion post this pandemic, like made in America is going to have a real surge. People are going to like the one time people will pay more is when they want to feel safer. And, and that will happen. That just is going to happen for at least half the audience of America. So keep going. Yeah, I hope so. So, I take the step back. I haven't really been like pushing anything on that social channel. And in this time, like, right, I suffer from this chronic illness and I'm like, I got to start to go in on all this. There's no awareness on this. I'm super passionate about it. Right. And so I start this podcast that is doing actually really well. I've been doing it for two years. So like my focus a little bit shifted, but now I'm ready to relaunch the protein bar. And I'm just like in the pandemic and like all of this. And then now my day gig, which is in marketing and e-commerce, which you know all about, is a 24-7 job. Unfortunately, mine is not going to be going forward after this coronavirus stuff. And that's what's been funding all of these kind of hobbies is what I like to call them. So I just, I'm kind of at this crossroads, like I don't want to give up on the protein bar, but I've never made a dime on it. And should I give up on it? But I think it potentially has legs. Probably not. Even the way you're talking about it, it has too much happiness attached to it are you i think the bigger question is now the pra- so the emotional part i would say no like listening to you the answer is my hot take no now we need to layer the practical part you right can't, if you're if you're losing money on this and and you can't afford to lose money you might just need to take a pause yeah yeah I mean, and then the question becomes can you make money like can you know can it become a money maker like for example you know you know, you got a local producer of it now. I'm sure the costs are a little bit higher, but you've got the stability of it. You know, are you able to charge more or will customers push back because 30 million are out of jobs and like, fuck you with the, with the protein bar twice as expensive as everything else. Well, and when I first launched it, someone said, there's a thousand protein bars at Whole Foods. Why would you do that? And that almost like fueled me to, yeah, fuck that. Like that person, that's a, that's a ridiculous, there's nothing that is invented. Whoever that friend or relative or coworker or, or family member is needs to get punched in the face. Yeah. I was like, but the competitive price, like what you were saying with price, like that's like I have to be in a certain range. But too. what if what if you're what if you innovate? What if your protein bar that anybody that buys a 12 pack gets part of a closed Zoom group and all of you get together once a month and now all of a sudden your protein bar is six dollars instead of a dollar. How much are protein bars? But, I mean, under two ninety nine is probably really right. where you want to be. Right. Got it. So, what if yours was actually five ninety nine when you buy a, a twenty four? How much is it in a case? Twelve, twenty four. Twelve. 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 What if yours was five ninety nine for a twelve pack? But you get to you get a code inside of the box when you buy it in a twelve pack only. You only sell them in twelve packs. We're innovating now. Well, this yeah. is what I do well. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. If when you get in, you get a unique code that gets you confirmation to get into a group that gets to talk for. What if you mix both of your worlds? What if this is actually targeted towards well, females? Yeah. And you know, Mitrios, that, well, like, that's you, kind of what I. Would, yeah, I mean, I made it because I struggle with certain foods, so it's right. dairy and gluten free. So, so why don't why don't why don't you become the first person that makes it a content access bar, not just the bar? So now the bar is seventy two bucks a case. Now you're making a couple bucks, and now you're in a closed 
uh, Zoom or Google Hangout each two, twice a month for two right. hours, building community. And, and maybe providing some sort of value or content based on like my knowledge for what of I course. know. The, the value is you're the Pied Piper. You're throwing the tea party virtually. Like now all these women are gonna have a community. You guys are gonna be friends. That's the value. You're the orchestrator. You're right. the conductor of this fucking incredible community that is clearly gonna be epic if people are buying a $72 case of protein bars just to be, it's gonna be the community part that they're actually buying. It's yeah. a fucking good idea. I want you to do this. I I want, this is what I want. I mean, I have to still find a day gig, I just, obviously. I fucking, you know what a silver just, platter is? I just fucking gave you a real business idea. It's a fucking- I, No, like, listen, I, I've been thinking, like I have this successful, should the bar sponsor the podcast? Like I've been thinking about that. Like, well, good news. Like how I, do I- I'm, I'm better at business than you. I've thought yeah, of something better business. on the spot. Here you go, here you go. You're, you now sell it direct for 72 bucks a case only. You can't buy one. It's only, I only sell it. Fuck third party places. Okay. You're the only one that sells it. Okay. It's 72 bucks. Yeah. When you've, now you don't even need to, wait a minute. Now I'm pumped. With you being the only one who's selling it, fuck the little code. You've got all the information. You just email B look look see and you're like, here's I'm your email is now gonna be the email you just bought this with is now allowed into this fucking password protected community. I'll yeah. see you Friday nights from six to eight, twice a month. Can't wait to see you. You're gonna fucking kill this. You think people will actually do that? I'm convinced. Okay. I'm completely convinced okay. people do it. It's I even mean... better. It's even better than that. Everybody who's watching right now, don't just do it to be nice. And if you're actually interested in it, what, what's your email? Uh, Melissa at Boo or Melissa at It Fits Bar. If you want to do, yeah, Melissa, Melissa at It Fits Bar. Super easy. Right. So I'm gonna wait for Dustin to do his thing. Make let's make sure this is the right email. Yep. Uh, like I'm I'm reading the comments across all the pieces. I think there's a lot of women that would join this. Like people yeah. like friends. There's a, there's is this one, right, Melissa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. Yeah, one in 10 women have this disease. Like it's very prevalent in 200 million women. Right, and so to me, if those same women are paying three bucks for a protein bar they like, now yeah. they're paying $6, but for that extra $3, they're gonna be part of a closed community that's gonna become a sisterhood? Fucking, you know how much more expensive therapy is? <laughs> Yeah. You know, how and, expensive, and you, know how, you know how expensive a glass of wine is when you go out with your girlfriends to dwell? It's a fucking deal. This might be too cheap. We might have to make it $99 a 12 pack. I love you. I, I love you too. I really think it's, I genuinely think it's a great idea. I think I, it's gonna fucking work. I will work. do this. I will do, and I will tell you, I'll follow up with you. I will do this. I, I think I, it's I, such I, a big idea that most people should follow this. I think this is a model. Meaning like everybody right now that has a product should go to this model. It's access. Yeah. Like yeah. if I made empathy 40 bucks, but it came with an hour of me, like I'd fucking be 10 times bigger. Yeah. An hour with me with everybody. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Example, but, but like, <laughs> one, no, I agree with Dustin, you. you should do it. Back. Dustin, put you the should, email back. Jesus you Christ. You should do We're that. trying to sell some fucking bars the, the, out of here. Still the spelling error. Uh, you like, fucked up again? It yeah. fits. Uh, <laughs> you can't spell for shit, Dustin. No. Nah. It's okay, Fuck. Dustin. They, you can find me, you can DM me on Instagram too. I have my handles up there, all three of them. Okay, I mean, I obviously have a little extra time now too. Can you check, can you check your email real quick and see if anybody's yeah, emailed does, you yet? Oh, no, your email. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you check it real quick? People I, I in the mean, comments, how many people are gonna buy this thing for 72 to $99? I'm thinking about raising it to $99. Seriously. It's a, it's a club, you're, you're paying for the club and then you're getting the bars. What else can what else should the club offer? Just for other Access. people who might yeah, do you, this. Well, just, you'll you'll build on top of it. You'll you know just like that nice kid Chris earlier with the nonprofit. At first you'll be like, "Hey guys, we're here, fucking Gary, right? We are, yeah. you know." And you, you yeah. get comfortable, you get to know each other, and then then it gets rolling. Then you're doing wine night. Then you're fucking make a T-shirt. Then well, you're like you know, like fitness. Like I'm into fitness too, which is kind of where this you'll protein do a workout. Bar. Yeah, you'll yeah you'll, you'll do a workout regimen. Like you know, it's it's gonna work. I have two emails, but a bunch of people are following me on Instagram. Two is better than zero, and everybody's watching right now. So as soon as this ends, everyone's gonna e actually email you. But I really, really, really think. That well, this and what is... if I could bring like fitness people on or do cooking class? I mean, I could make a, I could just create a whole series in these. Listen, I'm telling you right now, people are gonna right? pay nine, people are gonna pay ninety nine dollars for the bar. I think the way you do it is you do it bi monthly. So they just sign up for the subscription. Basically, they're paying six hundred dollars a year to be in the club. Yeah. Every every two every you know every every month every buy month they get the $99 box for you know with 12 bars yeah they can reorder more ad hoc if yep. they'd like because maybe some of the people are like oh I like this bar better than my other bars like I think it's very real I, if this comes true you literally just like made my dreams come true
listen, I have something better for you. This is 100% gonna come true. I'm desperately hoping it ha- happens for you, but yeah. right now, there are hundreds of people deciding to use this business model. This is actually a business model. Right. Like, this is a big model. Like somebody with peanut butter, somebody with t-shirts, right. somebody with music, like people are gonna do this. I'm completely convinced. Well, and it, maybe we should just even build it as a business model and that's like another keep, step. Keep your ambitions down. Let's be practical here. This is where people get fucked. Oh, we're gonna build a fucking platform. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I, I mean? Yeah, Listen I'm an executor, I promise Ex- you. I believe I you, I, I like your energy, I can feel yeah. it. Listen to yeah. me, 99 bucks a month. Real quick, I listen, I wanna know from everybody in the community that in, literally reply, I'm in, if you're actually gonna sign up for the $99 protein community bar, I wanna, I wanna see in if you're in. I'm really curious. Like, if they all say I'm in look, right now, then Dustin's, I, Dustin's I'm going gonna, to register. Dustin's, I'm telling you right now, Dustin's gonna start showing you all the ones right now. Yeah. That are, then I'm going to manufacturing tomorrow. Like I will, I'm going to turn it. Here's better this. This is such a great community. Take the money from everybody on pre-sale. I'm okay. telling you right now. Like Susan yep. Barnes is in. Thank you, Susan. Mara Lord is in. Thank you. Yes, Melissa, this is going to work. I'm telling you, Frosty TV is in. <laughs> Vdox is in. This is amazing. Alejandro's in. This is awesome. It's going to work. And, I, now, and now you have a framework. Now you can promote. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're literally changing my life and making something I dream about come true. I didn't think about it this way. Right, because, because, because what I'm creative and like what I'm good at is seeing things that other people don't, see. I think that's what I'm good at. That's why I innovate. Yeah. Wine yeah. text, by the way. Oh, you're in Michigan. Michigan. Yep, you're fine, you're fine. I, I do buy empathy and send it to everyone for Christmas gifts. I love you. Just so you can know, you please, I love you can too. Can you please post wine text in yes. your Facebook page and be like, all oh, my yeah. wine, like, you know everyone's drinking wine. Like, yeah. you know. Especially just, right now. Especially right Shit's now. Shit's blowing up. Shit is blowing up. You know what else is blowing up? It Fits Bar is blowing up. The $99 I, bi-monthly I, community that happens to sell protein bars. I appreciate you. They're, they're vegan and gluten-free people, but they taste delicious. But here's the best part. You're gonna build a community. Yeah. Then people are gonna get these bars. They're gonna start passing out the bars. The, you know, when somebody, so many people are gonna value the $600 for the community because you're yeah. fucking, your energy is on point. This is why I'm giving you this idea. You're gonna I, be good at it. I think you're gonna be good at it. I think a lot of people that have been on the show wouldn't be good at yeah. being the Pied Piper of the community. Yeah. If I did this, I'd fucking make 40 trillion a year on it. I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I want to do, thank you for this advice. I mean, 40 trillion would be amazing. But you know, you know what's good? Like, for example, like somebody said, it's over too expensive, and sh- and I understand that from yeah. uh, the Brianna physical because she's looking at the literal execution of bar should be not six dollars or three dollars. I get it. Yeah. And and by the way, to her point, she might jump on here and say, and there's other communities. That's great, but it's gonna be your community. Yeah. You know and what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, My community for sure. And what I mean Gary's by that is gonna come on to one of these zooms relax, that I have. Melissa, relax. I like the salesmanship. <laughs> I'm a terrible salesman. No, you're that great salesman. That was a fucking great pitch. That was super gangster shit. So everyone's gonna be like, I'm in. No, that's that's awesome. I Good really, luck. really appreciate it. One last question. This is totally unrelated. Were you sore after the plank challenge? You know what? My sh- you know, because I kind of did that downward dog. Like once she told me we could do, I didn't realize you could do like on your hands. I was always like this. Yeah. Not not terribly. I'm super sore today because I did fucking Bulgarian split squats yesterday, which are the fucking worst. Yeah, they are. I agree. I fully agree. I fucking hate that shit. I did abs this morning, which is super fun. I'm starting to actually, like I, I never, eat in, this, in this five and a half years that I finally got my health together, I never, like abs are a byproduct of everything else I'm doing, yeah. but I've never gone ham on abs. And my, like when I'm chunky, and I'm a little chunky right now because of COVID, the, my, you know, like a lot of men, like mine goes a little bit to the tummy, but like, I'm really excited about building up my, like building up ab muscles has been really interesting, especially because of my back issues. Yeah. And my, you know, it's, it's, we're really on that kick right now with Mike, which has been fun. Awesome. Gary, awesome. I appreciate Good you. Luck, Thank Melissa. you one last so time. much. Let's put up your email one last time. Let's put up Melissa's email. Listen, everybody, I really want you to try to do this. I'll tell, I'll give you guys, a, for several of you, you should do this for a reason. You also have product ideas. And I think doing a year with Melissa and watching how she does it, stumbling through it, will help you launch your peanut butter, your flowers, your t-shirts, your coffee version of this. I think this is a huge business model. I think I will recall this video in seven years when this is a common business model and I'll be like, you know, told yeah. you. And I'll be like, Gary changed my life. So See ya. thank you, Gary. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Dustin. Yes, sir. Super high-end Pinot Noir today. 
you know, and I know yesterday's Cabernet sold out in like 12 minutes. So a lot of people looking for a Father's Day gift didn't work out, but today's is like a $48 wine. I think it's gonna go for 22 bucks. Pinot, which is like the hot grape varietal. Um, I think uh, I think it's uh, I think it's pretty good stuff. Dustin, why are people that are watching right now not? Why have they not signed up for Wine Text when they actually buy wine? Obviously, real quick. Yesterday, I did the whole joke about like we'll block you. If you if you've signed up for Wine Text and you don't buy wine, please in today's offer hit stop or unsubscribe or whatever the functionality is because. We, it costs money to send a text, so you're being very sweet. But I don't want you on the list if you're not a wine buyer. But Unless if you you're do, for but if you, friends. yeah, I mean, if you're buying for corporate reasons or if you're a real estate agent, like, like what I love about Wine Text is it's a great B two B thing because yesterday we sold a hundred dollar wine for thirty nine dollars. When you give that wine to uh, your boss or a client and they Google it, it's one hundred nine dollars. You get that clout, but your but your cost is low. That's the I mean, what's great about Wine Text is these prices are insanely, um, like like that, you know, I don't know if you, you know, I've been telling you off screen, like they're crazy deals. I'm really excited about it. Please sign up for Wine Text if you haven't. I'm just gonna read the comments, see up. Oh, somebody signed up yesterday. I know a lot of people, or I know Texas, and I know there's a lot of places you can't ship to. Yes, you could just send a gift to the US. I would sign up for three phones if I wasn't in. That's a, I'm not on this. I could not tell you were joking yesterday. It's funny. I am yeah. good sometimes. Gabriel Costa, thank you. Some people I, DM me yes, telling me that please don't ban me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would never do that. But I am excited about wine text. And and if nothing else, because uh, we can't ship to certain states because of their own shipping laws. Gabby Ramos, winetext.com is a service I created for my dad's wine shop. It's a deal of the day, crazy deal of the day each day that comes in text form. When you sign up, you put your credit card in. So all you have to do when you get the text is hit reply with a number of bottles you want and then we send it to you. It's been huge. Massachusetts, you're in. You can do it. Please go to wine text if you haven't. And if you're, and if you're, uh, uh, if you're, um, yep, Carolina, South Carolina, you're good. Please go to the site. Don't ask, it. Ohio, you're good. I know you're asking here, but please go to the site. You'll see the states uh, that we can or can't ship to, but it would really mean the world to me if you're a wine uh, uh, drinker. What's little Lou doing? He said, eh. <laughs> eh, what? Eh, he's like sad that he lost his job now. <laughs> Sign up, but more importantly, a lot of you, could really do this for me. It would really matter to me if you could post it on either Twitter or your Facebook. I mean, a Facebook post is a monster. You know, like somebody just posting like best wine deals and then like we're getting like one or two signups from each one of those even when people have just 20 or 30 or 40 friends because it's a co-sign to your community. So it would really, really, really matter to me if you could do that. So I think Kansas is good, John. Please sign up. But again, don't sign up if you're not a wine buyer because it costs money. But the deals are sick. Today's like $48 Pinot for like 22 bucks. Like we've got a we've got a white wine. I just put the final touches on. It'll be a month from now, but it's thirty eight dollars Chardonnay. I'm gonna sell it for nine dollars, Dustin. It's a good deal. <laughs> Sign up for my new Twitter account. Here are the details. And the people that are gonna win over the next five to seven years are gonna be very comfortable in controlled fucking chaos. You don't love the process. This is dreams we're talking about. Dreams require sacrifice. All of your actions have to then map to it. Backpack, backpack, backpack. Nobody gives a shit about where you grew up. The whole game is scaling the unscalable. It's fucking hard work, it's being respectful, it's being a good person. Do that, that's just a good idea. It's there, the flip game's there. This house right here, there's $400 to me. I stay in my lane, like real fucking tight. But you can't be crippled. Everybody here is judging themselves. You're looking at what's in front of you right now. You're losing because you're laying in your bed looking at somebody's fucking glamorous photoshopped picture of them doing something cool and you're envious and you're jealous and you're impatient and it's crippling your upside. Let me just say it one more time if you're confused what I just said. I say put your fucking flag on the ground of who the fuck you are. Whoever provides the most value always wins. You're entering the greatest five year window of your life. My only answer to Nate or anybody like is just like just try shit. Shut your business down and go work for an apparel company for three years. Nobody you've ever met got there without the hard work. So you better get your speed up. You better work harder. You better work smarter. If you can't Google stuff, you're not gonna be able to do anything that I'm telling you to do. Gary TV, my new account. Check me out. Hope you enjoy it.